Hi, I'm Alex Skolnick. Hi, I'm Mark Maggie. Hi, I'm David Ellison. And I'm Mike Portnoy. And we are Metal, Metal Allegiance. Allegiance. And you're watching Loudwire. Ever feel like you're the least talented guy in the room? No, never ever <laughs> felt that way, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Gromit here, everybody, for Loudwire here with the core of Metal Allegiance. A core four. Maggie, core four. Yeah. Core four. <laughs> David Ellison, Mike Portnoy, Alex Skolnick. Very awesome to have you guys here. New self-titled album out now. Uh, and, you know, when you listen to this thing, it's obvious that it wasn't just kind of a throw it together or whatever kind of a thing. It's very involved. The songs are really well written. Um, so with your pretty damn busy schedules, you know, where did the songwriting for this fit with you guys? Over well, the holidays. Over the holidays? <laughs> okay. You know, and it really, you know, we started, our first show was on uh, Motorhead's uh, Motorboat uh, last year. And that was our very first performance. And it was on that boat where we talked about creating a record. Mike invited us over to his house for two writing sessions in December and January. Um, so over the course of, of two kind of long weekends, we wrote the entire record. Mark Mengi here, who is, uh, you know, sort of the uh, evil conspirator that started this whole thing, you know, uh, he basically said, he goes, I want, I want us to be the core who write it. Um, and we'll have a, we'll figure out who else is going to come in on it. But he, also, he said, he goes, I want to write a thrash record. So when we got together over it at Mike's, that, those were the marching orders for Mark. And uh, we got to work on it. And here we are. You know, the beauty of it is, is we did it in a room together. And I think you hear it on the record. It's not one of these internet records where everybody phoned it in from the convenience of their home studios. There was a couple exceptions with a couple of singers um, just because of location. But, you know, the writing, the tracking, the, the really putting this thing together is, it happened just like this, the four of us in the room. Yeah, the way records used to be done. Yeah. And vocals are always done later anyway. So that actually didn't make a difference. But like the core of the record is all like guys in a room. True collaboration. Yeah. You're talking about the people that you just have guesting on this record, you know, like amazing vocalists like Chuck Billy and Phil and Salmo, uh, yeah, Randy Bly, another one. Um, who was, do you think, the most fun to have in the studio out of everybody? Gary fucking Holt. Gary from Holt. Holt. Yeah. Damn that, we had He's a fun. Dude. We He's had fun. a blast tracking, man. I mean, it was just laugh fest. Yeah. We just, we would be in the middle of tracking. I'd just start cracking up, fucking him up. It was just, I mean, that was for me, yeah, that was fun. Mark Oswega sang a lot of the, uh, did a lot of the vocals on the record as well. And it's, uh, it's funny, you know, Alex did, you know, most of the vocal production, you know, really, it was fun to see Alex step up and really take command of, of the, of that process. Cause you know, everybody can't just be left to do their own thing, you know, especially once we had the tracks written and uh, lyrics were written and lined out and, and it was fun to watch Alex work with with Mark because Mark is just a hoop man I mean this guy's like a musicologist he's like a he's like a from another era he says he runs around like you know talking about Paul Anka and singing like these old like classic songs from the 60s and 70s the singer of Death yeah. Angel yeah yeah singing yeah. Oh, he has so many references <laughs> he warms up to Journey songs yeah. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, it's funny. It's pretty. It's a, he, the guy's a hoop, man. So just you know, yeah. for me, what being there in the room while he was singing and just you know cracking one-liners on the mic, you know, it's just all part of the the good spirit of what this thing really is. I think it was awesome too uh, for Randy to come in too because actually he yeah. Randy Mark had uh, the guideline for some lyrics and some the title for Gift of Pain and maybe some st sketches, but Randy like pretty much shaped it. There, yeah, right, right there on the spot. An hour, yeah, dude, an hour he before he recorded, yeah. Literally an hour before. Yeah, and and I have I have great outtake footage of Randy warming up before he sings. Like, if you just I I had the camera just in the room with him, so you could hear what he's doing while the song is running. He's getting ready, and he's grunting. And he's like, <laughs> like there's like literally, <laughs> the ramp the, up. yeah, there's this yeah. whole yeah. ramp up that you don't even hear. It it oh, it's yeah, awesome. with like a 58, right? With like yeah. a handheld mic, you know, yeah. like like what you'd use live, you know. And he's in oh, the he, studio he, cutting. You can see that yeah. footage too. Yeah, it's, it's he goes into his own. You yeah. see that at the live concerts. So. Yeah, dude's an absolute animal. Yes. Uh, and also, out of all the people that came in, I wanted to know who uh, maybe were you the most surprised by their level of talent or the most kind of in awe of when you saw them actually perform? I mean, it's, it's oh, I think like almost, every, you know, everybody had has so much talent. Yeah. yeah, we there was no nobody was we were surprised in that sense. But I think just hearing what they did every time, it was just. Oh my God! I, 
I think the first one was Chuck, and that just sort of set the bar. Like, and can't kill wow. the devil. Wow. Yeah. 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 All right, and then the next one. Fuck the, the devil. Next, yeah. All right. You know, Christina then, Scabia, you know, she was in Italy, so she had to record over there. And um, Alex was walking through kind of the logistics of, you know, the placement of her, of her vocal. And we had the video of it. And, you know, she is such, just such a, just awesome singer. You know, it's, we've had her on stage with us with Megadeth singing to Tulemon. And when that girl steps on stage, the room changes. I mean, you feel like you're at the Grammys or something. It's like a world-class singer really coming out and just killing it. And, and when she sent her performance over and we laid it in the track, oh, we were like, on. we were just I, like, uh, like goosebumps. Goosebumps. It, was, total goosebumps. it would just took the track to a whole nother level. So that yeah. one for me was probably the one that when it showed up, it was just mind blowing. Yeah, I, I think the biggest, I don't want to say surprise, but the biggest uh, all right, surprise <laughs> was uh, Phil Ensemble's track. That was a surprise, yeah, because we didn't know what we, to expect. We didn't, it, that was the only song where we didn't give him lyrics, we didn't give him vocal guidelines or melodies or sketches. We kind of gave him, you know, free reign to do his thing. And it was like, you know, we, we, we wrote the song, we were like, yeah, we could picture Phil singing this. Right. But we basically gave him the track and said, do your thing, and we got it back. It's like, Yes, yeah. that was yeah, fucking awesome. What you he hear is what he delivered. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there was no altering on our end or, at all. I mean, that's You know, having those crazy. guys out with us years back, again, taking them out when they were, you know, Vulgar Display was coming out, and you could just see the groundswell of Pantera and see that this was clearly going to be the next wave coming up behind what we were doing, and then obviously to see that realized. And to hear, you know, Dying Song with Philip. That to me went way back to. Uh, I used to see them in the club. I saw them in the clubs when they were playing on power metal, which was pre Cowboys from Hell, you know. And and to know what Phil has done in his past, kind of before they got really popular, to hear him go back to some of that really just vibrant classic Phillips and Selma stuff. I, I think we captured it on this record, and I'm glad that's the Phil we captured on this record. And with your guys' main projects, you're super hardworking, hard touring. I'm sure a lot of the time, you know, it, it gets to the point where it feels like a job. So I'm sure, you know, when you're doing something like this, it feels super fun and, and refreshing and all that. Um, is having those, uh, I guess, foundation bands where you're putting in all that work, decades and decades of work, does that make a project like this all the more rewarding? Yeah, we wouldn't be able to do Metal Allegiance if it wasn't for our other gigs that we've spent the last three decades, you know, with that. And I mean, listen, we're forever grateful for those, the, the, the effort that all of us put together on those groups, you know, whether it was Dream Theater, Testament, Megadeth for me, you know, and, um, and you know, th those are the things that allow us to do that. So, but if, if the fun ever leaves Metal Allegiance, this band is over. Because it really is predicated on the fun, and and it's because the fun goes into the music, it comes into the hang, and uh, and it's it's a cool thing that we're able to do because we are busy doing other you know records and touring and stuff like that. But for us to all get together, even just this week in New York, and hang out, play shows, it, it's the refreshing face in the crowd. You're like, hey, what's going on, man? And we you know get together and high five and put our guitars on and go play. And I think that's really the the special thing of this is that it is that moment that we get to get away and uh, have, have the cool hang time. Yeah, and also, you know, we get to get away with stuff that we couldn't get away with with our other bands. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, we kind of, could, each, each of us is sort of in charge of how we're represented. I mean, we all have to like what goes out. You know, if, if one of us doesn't like something, that's, that's it. But as far as, like, our parts, you know, we're, we're all playing in ways that you've never heard us before. So I, th I think that's a new thing. Mm -hmm.